for it, so we can get x of power p minus 1 equals 1 mod p, which means x of power p minus 1 um, divided by 2 times 2 equals 1, right? Mod p, here we use the fact that p is a type 4m plus 1, so x squared type p minus 1 divided by 2 equals 1. So, congruent. So, a square is equal to x squared is m. p minus 1 divided by 2 is 4m plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2. So, m at power, that's 2m. Congruent. <coughs> And we said that the problem here is we are not going to be able to multiply on both sides with m because it's even, so we need to get rid of the even exponent of m to make it uh, odd. So we are going to compute square root on both sides, which means we are going to get m at power m is going to be equal with plus minus 1. And remember, we said we are going to continue with the plus. So this is small p, everything, obviously. So if m squared equals plus 1, then we can multiply on both sides. So if m to the power m congruent with 1, mod p, then we can multiply on both sides with m and get m to the power m plus 1. Uh, one parenthesis that I had to make is m itself is not necessarily odd, so it has to be written as 2 to the power k times q, right? So I'm going to write it here as such. Uh, m the power 2 to the power k times q congruent with 1 mod p. In this case, if k is uh, bigger than 0, we are going to have to compute square root on both sides. And in, after each application of square root, we are going to get m at power 2 to the power k minus 1 so we decrease this one. Q will be congruent with plus minus one. Again, if we get one in the computation, we are going to continue computing square, square root of that. So we are going to get m at power two, k minus two times Q, congruent with plus minus one. If you are lucky and you get plus one, you continue until you arrive at m at power Q, congruent with plus minus 1 and if you are lucky and you are at the plus then we are going to uh, say m at power q congruent with 1 therefore in this case we we'll multiply on both sides with m we we'll get m at power q plus 1 congruent with m uh, q plus 1 will now be odd, uh, even so we can compute square root on both sides and we will obtain the square root of m will be m at power q plus 1 divided by 2 is plus and minus because we've got the solutions. At each of these steps we could have been unlucky and obtained minus 1. On the minus 1 branch, so this was on the plus branch, you would have had m at power m congruent with minus 1 where m again is to the power k times q. And we had to get rid of the minus one. How did we get that? How do we get rid of the minus one there? We multiply with a minus one that has the property <coughs> that call it the, uh, that it's b at the power p minus one divided by two. So we find the minus one Find a b 
such that b at power 2 minus 1 divided by 2 is congruent with minus 1, we know that for any b at power p minus 1, you get 1 from Fermat theorem. p minus 1 divided by 1 can be plus or minus 1. Uh, half of them will be minus 1. So you have a high chance of getting a minus 1. And we are going to take such a b. We are going to notice that if p is of the type 4m plus 1, that we are going to get p at power 4m plus 1 minus 1 if p at power 4m divided by 2 is p at power 2m uh, congruent with minus 1. m we said is 2 to the uh, power k times q, so we get p at power 2 to the k plus 1 times q congruent with minus 1. So we multiply with this on both sides. Minus 1 with minus 1 congruent with 1. m to the power 2k times q times b to the power 2k plus 1 times q is going to be equal with m times b square everything at the power 2k uh, times which, last time I said, I can denote this m prime at power 2 k times q congruent with 1. And now I've got in the same situation I see, just that instead of m, I have m prime n. You continue the same steps. At each decision point, we are going to get the same uh, alternative. If it's plus, you go as you went last time. If it's minus, then you, if you get minus one, right? Then you are going to multiply again with this uh, value here. And eventually, you are going to be able to compute the square root of m in this way. Let's see an example, numerical example this time. <coughs> so we are going to take a prime number P of the type 4m plus 1. Um, propose 1. 17. 17. 17 is 4 times 4 plus 1. Right. It's good. 17 equals 4 times 4 plus 1. Okay? M is going to be 4. So with such a prime number, we are going to be able to apply this mechanism and let's compute square root of what somebody proposed is a value. The square root we should compute. A smaller one. Seven. Okay. Seven. So let's compute square root of seven. So x square equals 5 mod 17. Okay? That's what we are trying to compute. What is x? We are going to first test whether 5 is a quadratic residue. Does 5 have a square root of now? This is the first thing you have to test. Again, how do we test that? If 5 have a square root, then there exists an x with this property, and that x has also the property that is respects Fermat theorem on 17, which is a prime, right? Therefore, we are going to have x to the power 16 will be congruent with <coughs> 1 from Fermat theorem. So this is the test we are going to do, which means x to the power square to the power 8 should be congruent with 1, which would mean we'll have x square will be 5. We have to have 5 to the power 8 should be congruent with 1, more 17. Now 5 to the power 8, it's um, more 17, 5 square is 25, which more 17 is 7. Uh, we were thinking 5 or 7? So, 7. 
Fun how yeah, your colleague 